My name is Lori Novak, and this is The Photo Breakdown. Photo Breakdown is a podcast where I talk with a photographer sharing the story of a specific photograph, technique, or business win. I'm your host, Scott Weidenkiewicz, and this is Photo Breakdown. Let's break it down. Hello, my name is Scott Weidenkiewicz, your host of Photo Breakdown, and today I'm sitting down with Lori Novak to talk about this really, really cool photo that she shared with me recently. Um, and well, you're going to have to look at it because this is only an audio podcast, but uh, this is a really cool photo of uh, a building and there's this gorgeous chair that is sort of floating there on the side of the building that you have to see for yourself. But before we dive in, this episode is sponsored by my lead generation course for photographers called More Leads, More Clients. Yes, if you'd like to increase the leads you're generating on your photography site, you can use the strategies I teach in my course. Access it at scottwine.com slash leads. Hey, Lori. Hi, Scott. How are you? Uh, good. Uh, I'd say long time no talk, but I talked to you, what, two days ago? Uh, yeah. Oh, Tuesday, yes. Tuesday. What's today? Thursday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I talked to you two days ago. <laughs> I, I appreciate you asking me to do this. I think it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to this uh, to this, to this show. I think it's going to be a blast to do. Um, and I get to look at a lot of great photos, even more than I do already on a daily basis. <laughs> right, but diverse, right? Diverse, diverse yeah. It's going to be very people. diverse. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So uh, I have two questions before we talk about your photo. Yes. The first question, if you can live anywhere in the world, oh, where would boy. it be? Uh, I'm going to say right off the top of my head, Lake Tahoe. And that's because we used my my mom's brother used to live out there. So we used to go there as kids. Um, not a ton, but, and that was my very first solo trip when I was 17 or 18 years old. I flew out, rented a car and was, I stayed with relatives, but I was on my own mostly. Um, you know, and it just, it just is one of those places that when I go back there, I feel, um, it grounds me. It's a very peaceful place for me. Um, I don't know if it's the mountains probably cause I tend to be called to mountains and I prefer mountains, um, as opposed to beaches maybe, but, um, it's, it's just one of those places for me where I feel very grounded and at peace and it's beautiful besides. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's a great reason too, for sure. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, uh, whenever my wife says we're going to go to the beach and I'm like, mm, do we oh really my... have to go just sit on the beach? Yeah, like, I can't. Come on. My I husband doesn't I... even ask that question cause he knows better. I'll be like, see you later. Have yeah, fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it's even more fun when you have two little kids. Uh, at least like, they're they have fun. At least they the have kids fun. do. Yeah. You know, at least you have yeah. something to keep you occupied. I suppose. Yeah, it, it, it's not relaxing because you're like paranoid. That's like, true. To the ocean. <laughs> Very true. So, um, <laughs> so my second question is: If uh, you could remove all physical, mental, and financial barriers and constraints, what project would you do in photography? I would probably travel the world and write about it. Um, and I would probably go back to places like Antarctica and the Arctic where I've, where they're like once in a lifetime trips, but there's so much more there that just doesn't, once is not enough. <laughs> um, but you know, they're, they're, that's, those are pricey and, but they're so worth it. And I, that's probably what I would do. I, I talk about this with my, my husband the other day, because I used to travel a lot when I was younger and single and for work, I would always travel places and I would go from wherever I happened to be. So it was different though. Like if I had started like a travel blog, like 30 years ago, I mean, you know, it's like, I, I wonder, you know, what if, right? right? Right. Um, because that's my, my one true thing that I always have known what I wanted to do is to travel. So. Right. Yeah. yeah that would the, be it. it yeah. It, it is it, it one of those things where it makes you a little jealous of the, of the photographers who did start that photography yep. blog. So many, you know, yes, like, you exactly. At, I'm like, why at, didn't I do that? What was yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like uh, Trey Ratcliffe had a genius idea many yep. years ago and, you know, a lot of people tried to do what he was doing and, you know, some people were able to do it successfully and, and others weren't, but now he gets to do what he wants when he wants. And it's all because of right. him posting photos for free for people to, actually yeah. use for free too. Right. <laughs> so, right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, of course he's got more to his business than just that, but, right, but a, right. that's a biggie. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's break down your photo. Okay. 
So this photo is a gorgeous, gorgeous black and white photo. Um, and uh, so can you talk to me about first, where is this photo? Where did you photograph it? This is in Chicago. Um, it was taken, uh, one of my friends and I did just walked along the Chicago River Walk, um, which has just been completed recently. Uh, it goes all up and down the Chicago River, uh, the branch that comes in from the Michigan, Lake Michigan. Um, and we start at one end and kind of head down until we're done, you know, until we either get to the other end or we don't. <laughs> um, but but the buildings along the river, um, there's a whole lot of new construction. This happens to be one that's one of the newer constructions at one of the points where the river splits and goes north and south. Um, so there's it's always changing. The the riverfront is con still constantly changing, and they there's like a new sculpture by. Santiago Calatrava there. Um, we went to shoot, photograph that. Um, but I tend to always be on the, on the lookout for the cool like buildings, structures, right. shapes, shadows, light on the buildings. Or I look down and see the reflections of the buildings in the water. Right, right. So, so th the shadows on this are pretty are pretty harsh. I mean, you got two, you got multiple sides of the building. Really, you've got three sides of the building if you really want to. Kind of, you know, yeah. 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 So, um, um, wh when what kind of what kind of day was this? This was. So it was actually. Oh, it says capture time at six thirty in the evening. Um, okay. Yeah. So it was which pre is possible. Yeah. I mean, the sun was starting to head down that way. Yeah. yeah. And it was this was yeah. in May. So. Okay. Um. And that obviously is a west facing. Uh, if you're looking at it, you could that's a west facing um, side because mm -hmm. it's completely lit yep. um, by the sun. One um, of my favorite things about architecture photos is when you have you see multiple sides of a building and one side is basically black. Yeah. You see that little bit. Of, I mean, you 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 kept some shadows in there, so you can still see some detail. Um, and of course, the the main subject of the photo yeah. <laughs> is perfectly illuminated too. The deck um, chair. That's what I called yeah. it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so is that what caught your attention? Or, it is. Or... You know, I just pulled up. I just pulled up the original. That's totally unedited, and it mm -hmm. still sticks out. Not quite as much as until you until it was converted to black and white and made very contrasty. Um, but it's still. I think probably initially what caught my eye is the the triangles that the windows that are open make. And the contrast between yes. them and the and the shiny reflective side of the building. But then I was like, look at that chair. That's just like sitting there perfectly. Yeah. So when I converted it, it made it pop. Like I don't think I had to do too much other than make it a high contrast black and white conversion. Yeah, so it's interesting. You brought up the windows, you know, I, and I look at this and I'm like, those windows really add a lot to it because if they were closed, it wouldn't. It wouldn't yeah. They'd it would be, be a white. lot of empty. Yeah, yeah. it would be white. And the chair would yeah. still stand out. It might be, it might still work, but the, I think that the windows help like draw you up into it. And yeah. then you see the chair and you're like, oh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and and even if the windows also, if they were open, but if they were, let's say, I know this, this type of building wouldn't have it, but if they were slide up windows to open, right. that would change it all too. It right, wouldn't be. It wouldn't make the triangle shapes that they yeah. make. And there wouldn't yep. be the the because you can see the reflection of the glass that's open. So the piece that's open is reflected back on the building too. Yeah. You know, so it's a yeah, it's an interesting again, that's really what caught my eye is those windows, the few windows that were open like that. Yeah. And I, I also like that that um the gradation, because you have deep blacks, you have mm -hmm. bright whites, and you have those midtones that are just um perfectly exposed you know, as according to a perfect exposure, you know, like you can see everything on the left side and then and the, you go, yeah. 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 Um, and then you're going light, then you're going dark. It's just a cool gradation. It's an opposite of, of a gradation, but it is a, in the entire spectrum. Right. Well, um, it's interesting in if I look at the histogram because it's tall on both sides and then kind of <laughs> yeah. flat in the middle, you know, which yeah. works. I mean, that works, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> it's I mean, not how it's supposed to be maybe, but you know <laughs> yeah yeah the, the, but it it it's artistic which is um more important than technical histograms you know yes. um, that, that so. right there sums up my photography <laughs> 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 it's artistic which is more important yes yeah yeah 
Um, so, so um, could you just talk quickly about the settings for the camera? So um, when everybody looks uh, at this, they can understand yep. how. I shot this with my my Tamron 100 to 400 lens, which is like Ooh. 90% of what I shoot with. Um, in fact, I've gotten to the point where I almost don't carry any other lenses with me because they end up staying <laughs> in my bag. Um, it was shot at 400 millimeters. I had uh, the ISO was on 400. It was a little bit of a grayish day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what else? Where's the Do you typically tend this? to bring your ISO as low as possible? Oh, d I shoot at 100 as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, I still have a too. film mentality and yeah. I, and I, <laughs> I have a camera that can shoot 1600, but I can still see the noise. Like it bugs yeah. me, even though people may not notice it. I do. And, and I, I'm, I'm almost like obsessive about it. It's, it's kind of dumb, but on certain, I think in certain things, like in a photo like this, that type of noise would stand out more than it might in some others. Right, right. right? So, um, I think it so it was shot at F6.3 at one one thousandth of a second. Nice. Yeah, the, so. that's a good uh that's a good aperture to get that um you know, all three sides of that building to be uh you know, evenly in focus where you where you, where you need it to be at least. Right, right. Um so uh is that a lens that you need a tripod for or is that a I, handheld? I size? rarely ever shoot with a tripod. Is, is so, the 100 to 400, is that that, that's not that really big one Tamron makes, is it? Um, they have a bigger one, right? I, don't, I think they have a bigger one. I think okay. they have one that's 500 or 600. Yeah, I, I think that's that, the one that like you need. Yeah. That's the one you need. Yeah, <laughs> you're not going to be lugging it around, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Anything else you want to share about this photo um, before we tell everybody to go check it out? Um, I don't think so. I think that it's just, um, again, one of those things that caught my eye or things that I look for when I'm out looking at architecture are the things like the windows that make shapes or the contrast between, you know, what is in the frame. Um, and I typically convert stuff like this to black and white. Um, yeah, always, you know, look for the yeah. direction of the lines. Cause I'm sitting here like this yeah. right now looking at this and I'm seeing all these diagonals and I'm like, I never really noticed those before, but they're really <laughs> strong, like right. diagonals in this image. So, um, but that's that's kind of how I go out. When I go out, I look for the shapes and the shadows and the the shapes that the shadows make, you know. And that chair was just a bonus. I mean, the way the light was just far enough up on that balcony that the light was heading it, and you know, I just, uh, you know, I make sure I move around and make sure that there's nothing poking in my edges and you know something that's going to distract from what my my what I see, you know, right, when I'm right. looking at it. And so, uh, f for for any photography collectors out there, she also has this available for sale. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Most of my fine art architecture is for sale. Yeah. Um, I, I I love this photo. When it, when uh, I told you about the podcast and you sent me this photo that you were really proud of, uh, I definitely see why it is such a cool photo. And I, um, I just had it printed, and it's just I it's become my favorite. Like every time I look at it, I'm like, wow, it's really cool printed too. It really yeah. is. <laughs> well, thank you so much for breaking down this photo with me. I, uh, where can listeners connect with you online? I know where, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty much everywhere. But my, I have two websites. I have a laurienovak.com is my fine art site where um, I sell my my fine art work, and I I do blogs about fine art hanging hanging and travel stories. And then I also have seewithlaurie.com, which is where I run mentoring and photo tours so awesome. those are two places uh i will be linking to this photo and to Lori sites in the show notes thank you for listening to photo breakdown for the show notes and to see the photo talked about today visit photobreakdown.com <laughs>